So happy spring and welcome everybody to today's Reiki yoga and mm. Oracle card circle. And we're coming together in this online community for connection, inspiration, expansion, and, and healing. And I'm so happy you're here. I'm Kathy Bergwong, Reiki master and your host. And I'm very excited to introduce today's guest healer, Lara Saxauer, who is a yoga teacher, a Reiki practitioner, a musician, an actor, and an author. And she's going to be sharing with us a little bit about um, yoga and oracle cards and tapping into her own intuition. And so I'm super happy that Lara will be sharing with us today. And would you like to introduce yourself and tell us briefly what you'll be sharing? Yes. Well, and first of all, I just for the first time got to look and see all of your beautiful faces and I'm very happy. And hello, Hillary. It's so nice to see you in this world where we're not able to meet in person quite so often. It's so beautiful to feel that we're in this space together, this virtual space. We're really here together in a way. And um, so I'm Laura and I, uh, I'm a 200 hour registered yoga teacher and currently in my training to have my 500 hour certification, which it has an emphasis in therapeutic yoga. And other than that, I do the Oracle cards, which I, I call intuitive Oracle card reading. And, and then I also, I play music and I feel like all of the different varieties of things that I do are for um, facilitating spaces for healing. So that's what we're going to do today is tap into our intuition, do a little bit of movement with some gentle, simple chair yoga, get grounded, and then uh, learn about Oracle cards. And then I'll do some readings for anyone who would like to have one. Yay, and Laura, that's awesome. Yeah, I know we met in a very creative setting and I've uh, admired your talents and your versatility for years. And so I'm just thrilled that you're here to share with all of us, some of your gifts. And um, yeah, I can't wait for you to share. And um, today I will be sharing a little bit about Reiki and uh, bringing you through um, kind of a guided meditation, a very short guided meditation. So you could kind of tap into this cosmic universal life or energy to, to fuel you. And um, our theme is spring, spring equinox. And so we'll, uh, we'll be celebrating our blossoming of something we'd like to bring forward. And um, also, I would like to start with an opening circle, opening circle, because yes, we are coming together in the circle. And um, so I would love everyone to just take a moment to introduce yourself by saying your name. Where are you right now? And what is something you love about spring? Spring is definitely in the air. So uh, Doug, would you please go, go first? So, hey, hey everybody, um, I'm Doug. I'm really happy to be here. Count me in, Laura, for the Oracle card reading later. And um, in Oakland, California, over by Lake Merritt, uh, met some people today who were cleaning up the lake and I'm gonna join them every couple of weeks, beautiful place. And I love new foliage. I love to see not just the flowers, but the, the buds opening and the new life. Mm, new life, yay. And Hillary, would you go next? Okay, hi, I'm Hillary, and um, I also like an oracle card reading, <laughs> always. Um, and mine's basically the same. I, I like seeing the flowers <laughs> bud again and then blossom. Thank you, Hillary. And Jason, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jason. I'm in Irvine, California right now. And I like the warmth and the new opportunities Ah, oh, nice. Thank you. Claudia, will you go next? Hi, I am Claudia Duarte. I'm in Downey, California. Um, um, I like the, the spring, uh, the colors, the amazing colors. Ah, the colors. Yeah, it's such a colorful time of year. And Adelith, can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, my name is Adalid. I am in Orange, California. I like the spring because um, the flowers and 
to me you can you can uh, smell in the air every morning it's uh, something different you know mm, that's beautiful we're kind of connecting with a, a lot of different senses right now aren't we and when nice to see you again hi everyone uh so my favorite oh i'm in anaheim california and my favorite part of spring is the vivid green of the new leaves um, I just love how rich and vibrant they are. Ah, oh, that's awesome. And hi, Kari, nice to see you. Will you introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, this is Kari. I actually hail from Long Beach, um, but I am in the car right now because we are driving back from the flower fields in Carlsbad. Oh my gosh. So yes, I love flowers and the green and, and the newness that spring brings. Ah, oh, that's awesome. And Lara, what do you love about spring? All of the above. Uh, I had an experience just the other day where I went out to my orange tree and realized there were a bunch of the orange blossoms on it. And it smelled like the most perfect, heavenly, divine perfume. And I love that so much. Just experiencing spring with, like you said, all of the senses. Mm. Lovely. So thank you again and welcome everybody to our circle. Uh, I would like to begin with the opening kind of blessing. And so at this time, if you'd like to just lean back into your chair and you can close your eyes if you like and just take a restful position as we as we quiet in and get ready for our wonderful yoga and Reiki treat. So Mm, just being and relaxing and this is a spring equinox blessing breathing in that orange blossom and all the beautiful fragrances and breathing out so the sequence of nature as it cycles and shifts with the vow of spring nature's truest and greatest of gifts, a time of creation, a time of rebirth, where earth arises, where life arises from mother earth, new beginnings, an eager fresh start, a chance once again to follow your heart, rejoice in the promise that the equinox brings and may you find balance and peace with all living things hmm. so we could just take a second to maybe seeing seeing the colors and the blossoms and the blue skies and breathing in the fragrance of the of life and feeling the warmth on our skin mm, and the taste of mm, some fresh fruit and the feeling of being alive mm, that feels great So before we do a short guided meditation, you're welcome to keep your eyes closed. And I'm just gonna share a moment to um, tell you about uh, Reiki and what that is. And then we'll bring you through a short exercise using this life force energy. So you're welcome to just close your eyes and just be. And, um, but um, for the friends who are new in the circle who aren't, um, don't know what Reiki is, um, it's, it's a hands-on healing that um, just brings in and, and brings in and utilizes universal life force energy, which is just a cosmic energy that flows through all living things. And so I know that um, Lara and Kari are, are Reiki practitioners, and we, we have been kind of trained, we, we've been able to bring in this life force energy as kind of a being a vessel to it, bringing in this energy and, and directing it wherever it's needed. And so with intentionality and, and just um, some kind of love and focus, we can direct it to, um, we can share it with people, animals, things. We can use it to bless our 
you know, our food. I know um, Kari shares it with the animals, with horses. And, and so it's just really wonderful, a wonderful way to um, bring in beautiful energy and, 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 and share it. And so the, the things or people or objects that receive it uh, just feel uh, he healing, healing and balancing and harmonizing. And so we will be, I will be sharing Reiki distantly with you while you're doing yoga and Oracle card reading with Lara. And so, um, and so you may or may not be aware of it, but it's just to, uh, mm, to, uh, to possibly you might feel tingly or a, sight, a heightened sense of intuition or maybe a little, ease and grace and flow in your yoga mm -hmm. and it's just a it's just a gift of love and so that's a little bit about reiki so we have a few more minutes and so you're going to be experiencing reiki for yourself from yourself to yourself because everybody can can access this beautiful energy so once again i invite you to close your eyes and just sink into your chairs and relax and, and just hear my words move through you to guide you a little bit on a short journey. To tap into loving energy and to, mm, to help it, guide it, to open you up to your creativity and nurturing a seed of something you'd like to create. So we're gonna just breathe in and breathe in deeply through your nose. And release. And breathe in again through your nose. Breathe in life. And breathe out any tension or worry or stress. Breathe in again. And out. And as you breathe in and out gently, we're just gonna take a moment to use our imagination to envision that you are a seed, a seed. Imagine that you're a seed seed, any shape, any size. And you are a seed that has everything it needs, that you need, creativity, wisdom, mm -hmm. support, and everything you need to grow into something magnificent, even in a greater way than you are now. Just imagine that. And we're just going to rub our hands together briefly as your eyes are closed and you're envisioning and we're imagining that we have a kind of sun, a ball of sunshine between your hands. And we're just rolling the ball of sunshine, glowing and bright and shimmery. You just imagine, feel some energy through, between your hands. I imagine you can bring that, that ball of sunshine to the top of your head, shining down like the sun shines on us, on the seed, on the thin, thin skin of the seed. And we can bathe ourselves however we feel comfortable, bringing this ball of life force energy to warm up and heat up, and open up that seed. So we bring in the sun 
And as you do that, imagine through the bottoms of your feet or the bottoms of your legs or your seat, imagine some roots starting to grow. Hmm. So roots are growing down and down as you continue to warm your skin and you're growing roots into the soil, into mother earth rooted and bringing up life, all the nutrients into your seed from mother earth. Breathing them in, soaking them in, mother earth energy for healing and groundedness and life. And imagine you can bring in through your, all the cells of your, of your seed, you can bring in moisture and water yeah. from raindrops, from the rivers, from nature around us. And so we're soaking in and basking in moisture and water and air. And so as we bring in the elements of the sun and the fire and the water and the earth and the air, we feel opening and expansion and expression of what we would like to create this spring. What life we want to add to our to our dreams. And for one more moment, enjoy what is unfolding for you as you have everything you need to blossom. So as Lara begins to um, be get ready to share her beautiful gifts and talents, all of us are going to, you know, rub, come back to the room and we could kind of rub our skin and our face to come back to the room and maybe stretch and wiggle our fingers and toes and slowly open our eyes. And Lara will be sharing with us now. And thank you so much for coming on this, this journey with me. Thank you. Lara, so ready. Thank you. Thank you. That was really lovely. All right. So today I am going to be using the tool of oracle cards. And oracle cards are somewhat different from tarot. In a deck of tarot cards, there are always a specific number of cards. There's always the same types of cards. The the fool, the lovers, and so forth. But when you use an oracle deck, there can be any number of cards. It can be just an image or a word or a prayer. It can just be an affirmation. And the purpose of the oracle card is to have a tool in order to focus your natural intuition. So, we have to start with oracle cards by honoring and exploring our own intuition. Because if we're going to interpret a card, we want to be mindful not to interpret its meaning from the ego, but to interpret it from a deeper level, a more uh, a natural grounded sense of true intuition. And 
I'll lead you through a few chair yoga exercises to just free up the joints of the body and ground our energy down. And then we'll get into uh, talking about how you would interpret a card and your style of intuition. And then we'll go into the, the readings. So find a seat. Let me change my view so I can see you all a little bit bigger. And if you feel comfortable, you can take off your shoes so that your feet actually, you feel the ground beneath you. In this world we live in where our feet are almost always bound and it's so nice to feel the connection to the ground. And then when you find that solid position with your feet sitting up nice and tall as though I had a string attached at the crown of your head and I was drawing you up and this might even make your chin slightly tip down, lengthening along the back of the neck. And then as the crown of the head lifts up, allow the shoulders to soften down so that there is a greater distance between the ears and the shoulders. And then if you like, you can put one hand on the belly and one hand on the heart, or even just place both hands palms down onto the thighs, any way that's gonna help you feel grounded and a bit contained. And then if you're comfortable closing the eyes or maybe just softening the gaze and noticing where your breath is landing in your body, maybe you feel that inhale and exhale at the chest or in the throat. Maybe you feel the inhale and the exhale in the lower belly. There's no right or wrong, just see where it's landing for you right now. Notice the sensation of your sits bones and your bottom connecting to the seat under you. Really feel the sensation of your skin and your flesh connecting down to the seat and being held. Become aware of the sensation of your feet, whether you're in shoes or not, connecting to the ground. There is a firmness almost in that connection. And even as you root down into your seat and into your feet, continue to grow nice and tall through your spine. I'm continuing to lengthen the spine by drawing upward on that string attached to the crown of the head. And then if your hands are on your heart and your belly, bring them down to the thighs. We're gonna take a few movements of the neck so you can, Either keep your eyes closed and just listen to my cues or bring your eyes open and watch me. I'll be doing them as well. And know that if you ever feel any stinging or stabbing or pain sensation to mindfully back away. If you do, you can always flag me down and I can give you a gentle alternative. But if it's just uncomfortable, become aware of what is uncomfortable and why that may be. All right. So tip your right ear toward your right shoulder, allowing the head to just droop over toward that shoulder. Even as your head is tipping off to the right, notice that your left sits bone is still connecting down. There is still weight and rootedness in the left side of the body, even as the head tips to the right. Inhale, bring your face to center. And as you exhale, tip your left ear toward left shoulder, going off to the other side now. Even as your head is tipped off to the left, your right sits bones, right hip, right thigh are all still firmly connecting down, brooding down. With an inhale, bring your gaze back to center. Exhale, tip your chin toward chest, lengthening even more along the back of the neck. Notice the weight of gravity drawing the forehead down. You're not pressing, in any of this spiritual work, it's not necessary to force or to press, 
but simply to allow what's naturally going on by gravity to occur. Inhale, bring your face to center. Take the shoulders back in little rolls. Remembering to breathe deeply and then take those shoulder rolls forward. <sighs> yes. Do you still have your connection to your seat and to the ground? Relax the shoulders. We're going to inhale and sweep the arms overhead. If you have shoulder or rotator cuff pain, just bring them a little bit up, but otherwise you can lift those arms all the way up alongside the ears. Bring the palms together in prayer and then float the hands down to the heart. We're gonna take that three more times. The inhale sweeps the arms up, palms come to touch. The exhale floats you down to the heart. We have two more of these. Do it with your own breath. The inhale up and the exhale to the heart. And then pause with your hands at the heart when you've completed. <clears throat> very, very good. Extend your arms out in front of you with your palms facing down. And then close your hands into a fist with your thumb on the outside. And then open. And this time, close your hand into a fist with the thumb on the inside. And then open. Close with the thumb on the outside. Open. Close with the thumb on the inside. And open. Again, if you have any kind of uh, shoulder discomfort, you can do this motion with your arms down at your side. Good, good. And then shake your hands out, releasing the shoulders down. We're gonna take a little twist. So inhale, sweep the arms up overhead and turn your torso to the right. Place your left hand onto your right knee. So left hand touches the right knee and the right arm goes behind you and rests on the chair. So you're twisting, your heart is now shining over to the right side of the room. If it feels okay in your neck, maybe you gaze back over that back shoulder, but that's not necessary. You can always keep your head neutral. Bring your awareness back to the connection of your bottom to the seat and your feet to the floor. We're gonna turn, Return back, facing forward once again. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead, shine your heart forward, and twist to the other side. So now the right hand is gonna lower onto the left knee. Very good. And then the left arm behind you, holding onto the chair at any place that feels good. Sitting up nice and tall. This twist is happening from the waistline. So we're keeping that rooted feeling of our our bottom to the seat and the twist is happening right at the base of the ribs. Maybe you gaze off behind you looking over that back shoulder. And then return to the front, sweeping the arms overhead, allow your palms to touch in prayer and float them down to the heart. We're gonna take one containment posture. If this makes you feel trapped or uncomfortable, you can always return to placing your hands on the thighs or on your heart. But if you want to try this, it can really help with grounding. Take your right hand and place it underneath the left armpit. So your heart naturally leans off to the left side. So you want to put your right hand off to the left side of your body so that maybe your right hand can feel your heartbeat. And then the left hand is going to rest on the right upper arm. So you're sort of giving yourself a little bit of a hug. Yeah. So again, that's right hand to the left side body, left hand to the arm. And then closing the eyes once again, or just softening the gaze, maybe looking down toward the tip of your nose and blurring your vision out. You're going to hold here. And once again, we're going to take that feeling of being that seed that seed that wants to grow, that seed that is ready for new life in the springtime. Honoring that just as much life as we get from the sun shining down onto the seed, we also get life from the rootedness beneath us. That as we develop our intuition, it's not always shining all the way up 
but rooting down, down, down. So hold here for the next several breaths. I'll play some music in the background, but really take these next few moments to embody the feeling of holding yourself, knowing that you are energetically the seed and that you are safe. When you're ready, blinking open the eyes and releasing your arms down to rest the palms on the lap and taking any movements you need to let that go. All right. So the reason that I invited you to go inward and root down, even though we're talking about intuition, is because like that seed, in order to receive the sunlight, we have to be connected down or that sunlight's not really going to do much for us, right? We can't grow if we're just sitting out on the cement. It's less likely. It could happen. <sighs> and so we think about intuition as being like the third eye and the crown chakra and receiving these energies. But if the energies aren't being received in a way that is containable within our body, and if we don't feel safe in our body, then we might miss those messages. It might just go flow right past us. So rooting down and getting into the body is a wonderful practice, especially if you're going to be working with intuition. And there are a few different intuitive styles that people utilize. For me, it's mostly a seeing. So when I do a reading for someone, I may see an image in my mind of two hands holding together and water pouring over it. So I may bring that up to a person and say, oh, after we saw this card, this image came to mind. What does that mean to you? Or how do you feel about that? And then have a conversation. For other people, it's more of a hearing, maybe hearing the words of your mind or hearing what other people say and catching a piece of a conversation that, oh, that, that's what I've been thinking or that's what I've been feeling. So it's more hearing. And there's also a sense of feeling, especially in the body or the emotions, maybe having tingly sensations or a, or a powerful feeling or just a sense of knowing. So again, that's seeing, hearing, feeling, and knowing. You don't know why you know something, maybe you just know it. Um, and so what I wanna do is, I'm going to just pick a card and I'm gonna show it to all of you. The word on this card is mending, M-E-N-D-I-N-G. And I want you to spend maybe the next 15 seconds looking at the image, and just being present with it. 
So I'm going to hold it up here. So just spend the next few moments observing the image. All right. So when you see an image like that, what is your first reaction? What is your first intuitive nudge? Do you think of another image that you've seen before that that reminds you of? Do you have a feeling like, oh, that reminds me of me and my sister? Or do you have a sensation where you look at the image and whew, you feel a powerful wave of nostalgia? So. Um, I don't know if there's anyone who would want to share uh, what they felt when they saw this image or what they believe their kind of intuitive style is. And if you want to share, you can just unmute yourself and we can start a little conversation about intuition. Yeah, Jason. Um, my reaction to it was um, put when you meant something, you're like putting care and compassion into it. And and you're putting love into it. So, I mean, I immediately thought of Reiki and how it's putting love energy into a body part or someone. Um, but then I thought of um, like when you mend your clothes or when you mend like a furniture or something, you're putting your energy and your love into it and into mother earth because you're saving it from like being um, thrown away um so that's what i thought of yeah that's really beautiful i i want you to send reiki over to me <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you is there anyone else who wanted to share their impressions of the card or their intuitive intuitive style yeah i'll give it 10 more seconds in case somebody's like oh wait i was too nervous but i do want to share <laughs> oh kathy Oh no, Doug. Doug would like to share. Oh, Doug, yeah. yes, yes. Um, so I don't know how to describe my intuitive style, but I felt like I was absorbing it without really thinking and um, almost feeling the card. And so I, I noticed um, this sort of upward-looking um, morning sky and kind of the angelic wings. And so I, I felt myself maybe lifted a little bit. Yeah. So maybe I'm more sensate. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. The sensation seems really, really strong with you. That's really cool. It's amazing how intuition is like our own superpowers. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hillary. Okay. So I'm not really sure what my intuitive style is, but it's basically, I was more looking at it, how it would, uh, apply to me and my life and what's going on with me right now and so it was a lot of connecting with my inner child and um, because they're they're fairy like in my mind um, finding the magic in every day and every moment and um, and then you started talking about sisters and I was like oh it could it could be that or like I have two nieces who are two girls so you know mm -hmm could be something with that too. Um, but those weren't the things that came to me first. It was more about how to um, move forward to the next leveling up in my life kind of thing, so. Yeah, I love that. And, and that actually kind of reminds me too, one thing I wanted to mention about Oracle cards in general is that um, when you're working with cards, it's not about telling the future, like, oh, what does my future hold? It's more about, what does this card mean if I were thinking of it as a tool to guide me through my current situations? You know, so it's kind of like, I need some help. What direction should I look in? And then once you kind of get an intuitive nudge about the direction to look in, that guides you into the other work that you can do. So yeah, girl, that was great. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? I'm really bad at seeing hands. So, you know, if you want to holler at me, that's cool too. Okay. Well then I think, 
I want to, before I get into the reading, just share with you what I do to prepare for, um, to prepare a deck for a reading. And since I was having computer issues, I didn't really get a chance to do this. So this is kind of nice to share with you. So if you have a deck, one great thing that I find to be really useful is to, when you first take it out of the box, touch every single card, just pick it up, rub your fingers on it, go to the next one. Just real quick like that, just moving through, kind of connecting your energy to the cards. And in that way, it's not like, oh, this came through the printing press and it's completely sterile inside the box. So, and this is usually something that I'll do the first time that I get a deck and I don't often do it unless I really feel totally disconnected from, from the deck that I'm working with. Another thing is if you feel like there's just outside energy clinging to it, you might hold it in your left hand, the whole deck, and then with your right knuckle, just tap, tap, tap with the intention of just old energy going away. You know, sometimes we just need to let stuff go, right? <laughs> yeah, Hillary? Would that be different for like, I'm left-handed. So would I hold it in my right and then tap with my left or? I think, yeah, th that seems fine. Cause that, that's sort of like your powerful hand then, you know, the left hand. <laughs> so, exactly. That's why I was asking. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's important just to do whatever way feels most comfortable. Cause then your energy of being comfortable is going to translate into the cards too. So, um, and then also what I'll do <clears throat> sometimes is you know, since I am a Reiki practitioner, I'll call in Reiki and, and feel the Reiki coming through my palm and then just bring it over the deck and just intend that any old energies um, are released so that the messages that come forward are definitely appropriate and aimed toward the person I'm doing the reading for. So it's kind of like asking the cards. I know it, <laughs> it's like you're, you started dating someone and, and the cards used to date someone else, but you're like, no, let's be present in this relationship right now. Let's let those exes go. Um, that's how I feel about it. So, um, so yeah, that the uh, touching every card, knocking the cards, um, using Reiki, or even um, sometimes I'll set, you know, my crystals and gems and cards out in the full moon, just letting that moon energy cleanse it and clear it. You want to make sure that you don't leave your cards outside if it's going to rain or the sprinklers are going to come on because while your crystals will survive that, uh, the cards not so much. And uh, all right, so let me tell you the decks that I have here so that when we do the readings, you can choose which deck you feel called to. This one here is the Goddess Guidance deck, and it has goddesses from different traditions all over the world. And the good thing about this is that you don't have to believe in the goddesses of these traditions. Since we're working with energy, if you pull the goddess of springtime, it's not like you're praying to that goddess, but you're utilizing that energy of springtime. So that's why I love all of these goddesses. I also have today just an affirmation deck uh, from the Super Tractor by Gabby Bernstein. And these are just cards that have affirmations on them. And Let's see, I don't know where my Archangel Michael went. Here they are. <clears throat> so I have Archangel Michael and there's prayers for him. I have some uh, mudra cards, but I typically just use the cards for the chakras. And then also the wisdom of the Oracle deck. And this one is the one that I used for you to uh, just kind of sense what your intuition style was. It's just a single word and an image. And while most of these books come with a, a guide that you can look up, oh, I pulled this card, let me read what the author wrote about it. And that can be really useful, especially if you're just getting to know your deck, but then tapping into what is my intuition leading me to experience with this card? So, all righty. So who wants to go first? Oh, Hillary was like, yes, yes. All right. Um, and so what I normally do, Hillary, is um, I'll ask the person to start off. Are you wanting just a general reading or do you have a specific question in mind? Oh, um, 
probably around finances since I'm planning on moving in like three months. So wow. <laughs> yeah. <That's exciting. laughs> this really is the energy of springtime for you because you're like starting new. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah. So we can do finances and uh, circumstances surrounding the move. Um, of those cards, were there any ones that particularly called to you? The goddess ones. Yeah. I kind of felt that. I just still have them in my hand because I'm like, yeah, <laughs> the goddesses want to tell you a story. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So in order for our energy to be clear and grounded, because like I said, intuition is not all up here. It's grounding down. So go ahead and sit up nice and tall. Keep your shoulders even. And we'll take three cleansing breaths that's in through the nose and a sigh out from the mouth. Go ahead. One more. Just allowing anything that's ready to go and release to release away. And then I'm going to shuffle the cards and you're welcome to keep your eyes closed and your energy focus inward, bringing your mind to that question of my finances and my move and set the intention that whatever answers come forward are for the highest good, they're for support and abundance. They're here to guide us. Mm. All right. So I pulled three cards for you. And when I do the three card, um, for me, that represents past, present, and future. And when I mean future, I don't mean, like I said, that this is what's going to happen. It's more of, this is like the tool for the future. If you want to get where you are desiring. All right. So the past card Laura, Laura, sweetheart, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but um, is this is a reading for Hillary, and is there is there a way for the rest of us to uh, participate, or is it something we should listen and, and apply for ourselves and what comes up for our own intuition? I'm just curious. Yeah, um, oftentimes when there are people gathered and observing a reading, there is an element of that that is meant for everyone present. Um, so kind of just being open to what it's having to tell you. And especially as we get into just a conversation about the cards, um, that might uh, call things out from you, for you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, so this first card is the Egyptian goddess Bast for her word is independent. And the quote is, your independence is a foundation for your strength and success. But I feel like this being in the past is possibly saying that a lot of the time in the past, you've done things very independently. Um, and independence is that double-edged sword. And so as I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm taking the images that I'm seeing and kind of translating them into words for you. So independence can be that double-edged sword. There's the power and the assertiveness and the direction, but then there's also the feeling of, oh, but I have to do this by myself. I'm isolated. So, you know, kind of landing and balancing in between those two points. So as far as the independence of your past, how does that resonate with you? Like what's, what's the story with you on that? Well, I actually, um, <laughs> I've had a lot of realizations recently. And so um, I feel like I'm more independent now than I've ever been, but I could read into the independence of like in the past being, I've, I've always like been alone and I have to, you know, even though I'm asking everybody else for their opinion on what I, they think I should do, I'm still like having to figure things out on my own kind of thing. So I could see how that would be independence, but I definitely feel like now I'm doing a new level of independence where it's like, I'm actually taking responsibility for what I want to do and stuff that I didn't do in the past. Yes. I love it. So it's a transformation from an old, maybe more unhealthy style to a new uh, empowered style of independence. 
Exactly. Yeah. And then for the present, the goddess Nimatoma, or yeah, I always pronounce Nimatona for sacred space. She says, create an altar or visit a power place to connect with the divine. And so I always feel that this card is an invitation to return to your sacred practices, to return to your meditation, to get clear um, when the world is kind of a barrage going at your brain and everything. It's like, oh my gosh. And then just finding that stillness in the middle of it. How do you feel that that resonates in your life right now? Very much. I was, I found this um, meditation from many different things. I kind of created my own internally and I had been doing that pretty consistently in the past couple of weeks. I haven't, so <laughs> I just need to get back to doing that. Yeah. And when it comes to finances too, it's the same kind of thing. Our finances will follow our mind and our energy because, you know, money is just energy in a way. And so if our mind is too busy and our energy is, is all chaotic, our money can feel that way. And so when we still still things down, the money can seem, seem more still and comfortable. <laughs> like magic. That sounds nice. <laughs> the magic, yeah. <laughs> Here's a good sign for the future. It's Rhiannon, the sorceress. You are a magical person who can manifest your clear intentions into reality. And so since it mentions intentions, my feeling is that in order to get where you want to, to do the things that you want with the resources that you want, you have to create those powerful intentions, which are built out of the stable foundation of your inner stillness. How does that feel? That uh, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I need to take the time to, even if I do stuff like this, I still need to take time alone with myself to just um, imagine in my own way, because when I close my eyes, I see nothing, but to imagine in my own way, um, what it will look like and focus on the positive and get myself to see what that could feel like. And I haven't been doing that. I've been procrastinating. <laughs> yeah, and, and another image that's coming to my mind is like a bicycle. If you're going on flat land and you're moving the wheel so hard, you're going so hard, you're going so hard and maybe wasting your energy before you need to use your energy. Then by the time you get to the hill, it's going to be like, ah, so the stillness, the sacred space is taking those moments to rest and go inward when you can, so that when you need that energy, you can burn it, like create just. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And so I'm glad that all of you got to see that's typically how a reading goes. It's not so much me saying, this is what's going to happen. It's more of a conversation, us using our intuition to solve a situation together and get some insight. Yeah, uh, does somebody have a question? All right, yeah, so then, um, all right, let's see. I don't know how much longer I have. I mean, and I'll stay afterwards and do everyone's card reading uh, if everyone wants one, like there's, there's no rush, but um, <clears throat> if there is someone who can't stay after um, a little later and wants their card reading now, then just wave me down. <laughs> or who wants to go next. I know a few of you were like, hey. <laughs> and Lara, Lara, you have about 10 more minutes and Hwen has her hand up. If oh, you great, can. yes. You can unmute, hey. Hi. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know how long we were going today. So I just wanted yeah, to- Yeah, um, it's uh, I think 4.15 officially and then I'll stay afterwards. So yeah, uh, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing okay. I, I think um, it's, it's, it's a really interesting space and I'm having an interesting um, presence here. So um, yeah, I just, I just wanted to check in and see if I could uh, have my meeting earlier just so that I have to yeah. pop into another meeting after this. Definitely. Yeah, I hope everyone. So, was there uh, one of the decks that called to you again, I have goddess deck, Archangel Michael, an affirmation deck, and the wisdom oracle from the beginning. Any of those sound like using your intuition? Was there one that, oh, that felt right? Uh, the goddess deck. Yeah. yeah. You know, the funny thing is when you work with decks, you sort of begin to have relationship with them and you notice like, oh, this feels like a deck that I know on a deep intuitive level. And so, yeah. <clears throat> All right, sitting up nice and tall, just taking a few cleansing breaths, setting the intention to let what's ready to go 
release so that you are free and clear and ready to receive knowing that all of the messages that come forward are for the highest good. And from this space of clarity and freedom, let me know, would you like a general reading or is there a specific question or area of your life that you are inquiring about? Um, I wanted to inquire about my relationship with spirit. Your relationship with spirit? I love that. That's such a wonderful question. All right, so go ahead and close your eyes, just holding that intention, holding that question. All right. And I also did, um, you can blink your eyes open. I did the past, present, and future because I feel like with the three cards, you get a, a more clear story. Yeah. So the past is Pele, one of the Hawaiian goddesses. She has the picture of the volcano. Uh, it says divine passion. And it says, be honest with yourself. What is your heart's true desire? And so when this card comes in the first position, it makes me think, what were the questions that you've been asking yourself leading up to this point that are troubling you? What is your desire? What are your, um, what is that inner conflict? Like with the feeling of the image of that volcano, like the, when the lava wants to come out, it's going to come out. Okay. And there's the pressure of until there is that eruption and the pressure can feel like tension and confusion. So what, what about that has been going on with you in the past? Um, I would say most of this life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be honest yeah I just always have been searching for something and not exactly sure and and trying to connect the dots lately yeah and what does that feel like for you do you ever feel like you have those moments of connecting the dots or is it always kind of elusive currently elusive yeah, yeah. I love that you're here though in this like you know here in your search and your quest I love it so yeah, so I see that, uh, you know, like that, again, that image of the volcano needing that release that, and, and the thing about the, the lava is that once it comes out from the volcano, that creates the new life and the new land. So we have to wade through the pressure and the pain and the ickiness sometimes in order to create the new land. Yeah. So the... A uh, card for the present moment is Sedna, infinite supply. You are supplied for today and all your tomorrows. And there's this beautiful scene of like a water with a whale and a beautiful goddess wrapped in seaweed. So my question for you is, do you believe or even have an inkling or a seed of belief that you are infinitely supplied. No, because I, I, I feel like there's tears that just want to like come out and just see, thinking about that that's possible. Yeah. And, and those tears, when you hold them back, it's like the volcano holding back. Sometimes the tears too, when we can let them flow is creating the new land, not the physical land, but that spiritual land. And uh, do you connect to water at all? Because this is that ocean scene. So talk about that connection. Um, I am a Pisces. I celebrated my birthday yesterday. Um, Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, and so I, I definitely identify as being water sign. Um, I'm also the year of the water pig. <gasps> yes. astrology. So there's a lot of water um, and water is probably the place where I feel most at home, like when I'm swimming or in the water. Yeah. Um, rain feels like home um, when it falls on me. So definitely deeply connected to water. Yeah, so then that too might be part of your invitation of discovering source and how you interact with source through that medium of water. And so finding ways to submerge yourself and taking away the minds view of the questions and the, the worries and dipping into that 
physical feeling of what if the divine, what if spirit is what I'm physically feeling in the water and then letting that develop and, and from a, uh, a perspective of the feeling instead of the needing to know from the mind. Yeah. yeah and the last card, funny enough, is about focused intention. It's goddess Diana and she has the arrow the bow and arrow, and it says, keep your unwavering thoughts, feelings, and actions focused on your target, and you will make your mark. Um, let's see. I, for, I don't know where my book is right now. The, the Bhagavad Gita says that, give me two seconds, I have to write over here. <clears throat> right. And this, ha this applies. So, in the Bhagavad Gita, which is the sacred yoga text, it says, on this path, effort never goes to waste, and there is no failure. Even a little effort towards spiritual awareness will protect you from the greatest fear. So I love that because with you and this focused intention, you intend to have this deeper understanding and this deeper experience. And even the fact that you're intending and searching is meaning that you are on the path and on this path, effort never goes to waste and there is no failure. So you can't fail, you're fail proof. Source has you. Even a little effort towards spiritual awareness will protect you from the greatest fear. So you just got wrapped in a cocoon of beautiful love and light and there is no failure. It's literally impossible. How does that feel? Um, it's really funny because yesterday I was looking at my brother's library and I asked him if I could borrow his Bhagavad Gita. So I, I, I didn't know why. I was just like, okay, I, I probably should reread this. <laughs> so uh, I guess that's confirmation. Cause... Yes. <laughs> yes. There is no failure. There is only success. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you everyone for letting me hold this space. Yeah, beautiful. Do you have, do you have one second before you leave? Laura, is it okay if I talk a little bit about working with water? Oh, please. That would be yeah. wonderful. If you're open. So first off, the color behind you when you're talking about water is just making me so happy. <laughs> and um, I spent a year working with water. And there's blessings of the hands where you just take a bowl and you bless your hands before you do something. There's taking a drop of water and putting it on your forehead and asking the water to bless you. There's drinking water, you know, finding that temperature you like and drinking it slowly and thanking the water for life. There's looking at water and recognizing how special the planet is. There's so many what ways that water and you can, you know, you already know about being in water, but there's little simple ways to bring that relationship you have, that flow that water gives you to, to help you on your way with these tools. And I'm, I'm sorry to speak up, but it's just, if you didn't have that blue color on and that blue in the background, I probably would have been able to zip it, but. <laughs> Never zip it, always let it out. Water. It feels great. It feels like we're in community and everyone can talk instead of. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Happy birthday. Thank you so much, Doug. Thank you everyone. And that's so true with the, the water. It's, there's so much joy and simplicity in having simple ritual and honoring through simple rituals and practices um, and doing that consistently too. And I love behind you, Doug, there's that whale tail. And in the card, there was, there's whale tails everywhere. You know, it's beautiful. It's perfect. Like you said, that cosmic synchronistic confirmation. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, Kathy, did you? Oh, sure. Oh, Thank you so much, Laura, for sharing with us. And I'm very excited that uh, you'll be staying after 4.15 so we can have a few more readings. And um, I'd like to invite anyone who'd like to share right now how that was for them to, um, to do the, into the stretching with the, uh, with the yoga or to see the reading or if you'd like to share right now as a kind of a closing circle, you'd like to put it in chat, that'd be great. How y'all feeling? <laughs> and yes, that was beautiful, Laura. Um, 
Mm, it's so glorious sharing a Reiki with you too. I just feel really alive. There's really a lot of energy here with Kari and Lara and all of your beautiful energy. Uh, so I would love to um, take a moment for Lara to share how you can connect with her and learn more about her readings and her yoga work. So Lara, would you like to share with us? Yes. So, wow, my hair was really short in that picture, huh? I was, I guess I was going through a Cameron Diaz phase. Um, so my email is sexhourlaura at gmail.com. Uh, that's a great way to reach me. My YouTube channel, I haven't been on as frequently, but um, I do post meditations and things like that. And that's, uh, if you just look up Laura Sex Hour, you'll be able to find it. But also it's youtube.com slash Laura Sex Hour Live in Light. And then my Facebook group is a community where I, um, I love to have people share inspiring and uplifting memes and just have a, kind of a sense of when things are going wild, there's a still place. And so that's what I really want to create with my spiritual artistry and motion community. And so to find that, you just go to Facebook into the search bar, spiritual artistry in motion, and then request to join and I will accept you. And then we'll be kind of in, a, in that little container as well. So. Yay. Yeah. Um, I'm part of that group and I love, I love your posts and that sense of community. Uh, so thanks for sharing how to, how to connect with you and all your good, your goodness. <laughs> yeah. So I would also like to, um, oops. I'd like to share also how you can get a hold of me if you don't have this information. Um, I too have a Facebook group that Laura's part of and it also supports you in living in joy and authenticity and creativity and, you know, feeling connected with others who are, you know, um, are like-minded people. And uh, this has been such a pleasure and a joy for Laura and I to share with you. And if you would like to um, donate, uh, make a donation of any amount, it, it helps this programming to keep on going. So you can kind of take a snapshot of the Venmo count. And um, very briefly before we close out with a closing prayer and uh, maybe stay on to, to get some readings, I would love to oops, um, just have you take a, a picture of this so you know um, I'd love to have you keep you in in our circle on Sunday afternoons and a few meditation things that I have going on these are online and I'm just tell you real quick that the next time we'll be together on a Sunday will be April 11th and that's with a special guest healer Tanji Zenraka Velasco and her topic is vibration of money so she's going to share how to just tap into abundance and different ways to circulate prosperity for you and out to others and examining our limiting beliefs around money and replacing with positive affirmations. So I'd love to see you then going forward. And just very briefly, um, please just take a, a, a snapshot or a photo of this. Um, I have some live events that I'm starting to, uh, to bring to my home, uh, my home garden. And uh, you can see some of the uh, upcoming events. So just take a picture of that. The next one will be April 17th. We'll have an Earth Day Reiki and music celebration. And I'm hoping that uh, maybe Laura can share some of her gifts then too. So that is upcoming events to stay in the circle. And um, yes, that's how to connect with me and be be, feel connected with some of the people here. So, ah, so Lara, would you like to, um, to bless us with a closing prayer? Bless us. Yes. All right. So sitting up nice and tall, closing the eyes or softening the gaze and bringing your hands to a position that feels appropriate. Maybe that's palms on the lap or palms together in prayer, resting the thumb toward the heart. And wherever you are, gently tip your chin down toward the heart in a symbol of reverence and honoring. And as we close this space, taking a deep inhale to honor yourself for being here and doing the spiritual work and exhaling. 
taking a deep inhale to honor all of your brothers and sisters who are standing beside you doing this work with you. And allow the exhale to release that. And taking another deep inhale, honoring all of your brothers and sisters who are not yet in this circle, but who are connected to us at all times. And release the breath. Knowing that as we build this sense of spiritual awareness and strength within our own being, we are building strength and support and connection to all beings everywhere. If it resonates with you, I'll close this practice with the chanting of one Om. If you wish to join me, inhale for Om. Oh. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Namaste. Wow, thank you so much, Lara, uh, for sharing all your beautiful gifts with us today. And thank you for, to all of you for your conscious participation in the sacred circle of love and light and beauty and harmony. Your energy, your bright energy, your loving energy is so needed on this planet at this time. So namaste to you, each one of you. And welcome to stay on for some readings. If you need to leave right now, I bless you on your way. Drink a lot of water. You've done a lot of healing work. Uh, be very gentle with yourself today. And hmm, happy spring. And I'm happy to stay as long as we need to get readings in. <laughs> <laughs>